maybe you know this, but at the moment in Egypt, there is a big conference about the state of the planet and what we human beings are doing to the planet. And uh, recently I came across a man called Peter Beard, Peter Beard. Okay, so this is a photograph when he was younger. And he is an amazing person because he came in a, from a, a, a rich American family and he went to Yale University. So he was very well educated. <clears throat> and <clears throat> in, the, in the 50s, in the 1950s, he was very attracted to go to Africa. He was already a photographer and he had a strong feeling about animals. And so he went to Africa, he landed in Kenya, in um, the capital of Kenya. I've uh, forgotten the name, of course. What's the name? Somebody tell me the name. Nairobi, Nairobi, Nairobi. Okay, so he arrived in Nairobi. And in the 1950s, Nairobi was quite a small little town. And the country was a huge country. And already since many thousands of years, the animals had been living completely naturally, traveling through that country knowing you know when to go to which part of the country um you know to get water to get food and so on there was thousands of years of natural uh, stability of the of the animals and of course uh, in the 1950s there was a population of only five million people in kenya five million people and uh, probably there were more elephants actually than people because there were huge, huge herds of elephants. I'm going to show you one of his amazing photographs. You can hardly believe it. I don't know if you can see it even, but I try to show you. You see this enormous herd of elephants. So this was he, a photo he took in the 1950s. And this was the um, almost the last time that uh, the animals could be in such vast numbers. Already, maybe 50 years before, Western people, maybe rich people, had come to Africa and gone shooting, gone hunting. And they would kill, you know, rhinoceroses, they'd kill elephants, lions, all the, the um, all these wonderful animals, they would shoot them like we might shoot rabbits. Because in those days, there was a tremendous bounty of natural, um, the, na the nature of, uh, of animals. And he was very touched from what he found in Africa. So I don't remember exactly the times, but anyway, he bought uh, some land outside of Nairobi and he lived there very simply. He made a kind of camp, tent camp with a campfire. He called it Hog Ranch, Hog Ranch. And he would travel between New York and Kenya over the next 50 years. And uh, you might be interested to know that now the population of Kenya, 70 years later, is 54 million. So in his day, there were 5 million human beings, and now there are 54 million human beings. And of course, during the years he was living there, the number of human beings was gradually increasing. And so there was increasing pressure on the animals. So when they'd had enormous areas to, um, to live their life, 
gradually this was getting more and more restricted. And I think in the 60s, the government decided to have a new policy and they created uh, some kind of animal, uh, I don't know what, you, what they call it, but anyway, there were certain areas which they set aside for the animals. I think it was in Kenya, it was mainly three large areas, um, huge areas like the size of Switzerland, you know, huge areas they set aside for the animals. And they told the native people that you can't kill the animals anymore. If you kill them, you're a poacher, you're a poacher. So gradually the whole situation uh, completely changed. So what had been completely natural before, suddenly the animals found themselves um, uh, having a limit, having a, a kind of limit and the native people who, of course, needed to kill, a few, to kill a few animals in order to live were now poachers. So if they killed an animal, uh, they were called poachers and they could, uh, of course, go to prison. So this was a completely man-made situation. And Peter was one of the first Western people who spoke very strongly against this situation because um, there was a terrible tragedy in one of these parks, one of these game parks, uh, where thousands and thousands of elephants were living. And the elephants were not allowed to move out of the park. They were constrained inside the park. There were too many elephants for the vegetation. And so over some years, the elephants basically ate everything and they created a desert. And of course, in, in the last period of when they were creating this desert, having you know, eaten all the forests and in the end they were, they were eating wood in order to survive. And the elephants were having heart attacks because what they were eating wasn't uh, suitable for them. And in the end, thousands and thousands of elephants just simply died. And Peter uh, went to this particular place and photographed the dead elephants. Um, in this book I just showed you, there are many pages showing these dead elephants just lying on the ground and rotting away, thousands and thousands of them. So an enormous scandal. And of course the government was very embarrassed. And so nobody was allowed to photograph these, these dead elephants, but Peter did it. And he published it in his book. He published uh, a wonderful book called The End of the Game, The End of the Game. And I'd like tonight to talk a bit more about Peter because um, he's published some wonderful books. He became quite an important artist, a, a great photographer. And after he'd um, developed his pictures, he would create montages. And he would exhibit these in New York and in Europe, in London, in Paris. And he, in fact, became quite a well-known artist by the end of his life. And I would like to encourage everybody to look up on YouTube. There's a very good little film, about 20 minute film called Peter Beard, Peter Beard. And he says some very, very shocking things in this 20 minutes, which I think everybody really needs to hear because what he was saying back in the 60s and the 70s, he was warning or trying to warn humanity that what he observed with those elephants, it seems that elephants are maybe the closest animals to human beings. They live in families, they have a kind of mummy elephant and other sister elephants looking after the baby elephants. And you know, the daddy elephants kind of go off by themselves 
and uh, do do their thing. So according to him, the the social life of elephants is very similar to the social life of humans, even though, of course, we're always wanting to feel ourselves superior. But um, I don't know if any of you know this, but at the beginning of the 19th century, the 20th century, so in 1900, the population of planet Earth was 2 billion people, 2 billion people. And now, today, it's 8 billion people, 8 billion people. And they project that by 2100, 2100, they, they project that it will be 11 billion human beings, 11 billion human beings on this planet. And what Peter argued in his life was that the human, human beings are repeating exactly what happened that he observed happening with the elephants. And of course, in the last years, more and more, we are having to confront the fact that we are slowly, and even now not so slowly, destroying our planet. This millions of years of natural development on planet Earth has been or is being completely um, changed. So many uh, animals, many uh, birds, many insects are already become extinct. And um, these wonderful uh, game reserves that were set aside in Africa are now not much more than a kind of tourist zoo where hundreds of trucks take tourists around a predetermined route one by one, even traffic jams, you know, in the middle of these animal parks. And the animals, of course, are, have become no more than a kind of token of their thousands of years of their history. And Peter was arguing through his artwork uh, and his speeches and so on. Uh, he was arguing that what he observed with these elephants terrible tragedy is basically what's happening with human beings. And as you may know, right now today in Egypt, there's the 26th meeting of the governments of the whole world, where they're discussing uh, what can be done to um, deal with climate change. Because increasingly, we have a situation where um, the ice is melting, the sea level is rising, and the oil and the um, combustion through cars and so on is basically putting into the atmosphere gases which are causing the heating up of the planet, right? So, I mean, we, we've all heard about it, but what he was illustrating from his experience in Kenya is that actually human beings, if they don't realize it, are basically destroying their planet in the same way those elephants destroyed themselves. And I mean, it's, it's a kind of sobering um, situation. And because I found this book uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was very touched from what he was arguing. I was very touched from the amazing photographs he took. He, he was a, a pretty amazing man. He uh, was extremely handsome and very well educated and very dynamic, uh, very unusual man who uh, later in his life, he met you know, many um, well-known artists, and um, somehow managed to combine his natural feeling of spending time in Africa with the animals, um, with uh, living in New York and, uh, and so on. So I can strongly re recommend, if anything I'm saying to you about Peter Beard is touching you, start by looking at this 20 minute video on YouTube. 
Peter Beard. And um, if that continues to touch you, I recommend the book. Well, I recommend two books. One is called The End of the Game. So, of course, in English, game is what we call the animals, game. Because, of course, in the old days, people would go and shoot them. And it was a kind of game, you can say, shooting the animals. So, but also, uh, it's the end of the game is also suggesting that as human beings on this planet, we are also causing the possibility of the end of our game, because fundamentally, we're not really different from the elephants. So, of course, this is a little bit shocking, but if you somebody who who stays abreast of the news you will know that since the last few years they have these big international meetings and you know the the important leaders from different countries all around the world they go to this meeting and they promise all kind of changes and um, here i am living in germany and of course you only need to go a bit into the countryside in germany and there are windmills thousands of windmills. So this is one kind of positive uh, change that we're using our technological understanding to generate our power. And therefore we hope to use less coal, less gas, which are polluting uh, our environment. We're basically polluting our, our uh, whole environment. As you know, in the in the Amazon in South America, I'm sure Cecilia will, will know this, that the trees in the Amazon are constantly under threat, burnt down, cut down. And, and uh, of course, the Amazon is one of the enormous lungs of the planet, lungs of the planet. So, of course, it's not so easy to see what I'm talking about. And therefore, I wanted to bring your attention tonight to this man, Peter Beard, because he was such a great photographer. And also, he made uh, incredible art pieces. Um, and I think when you, when you see this and you, you, you listen to what he says, it can be a little bit of a wake up. It was certainly a wake up for me, which is why I'm talking about him tonight. And um, the reason I'm talking about him tonight is that we, uh, a group of what about, uh, I think tonight we're about 30 people. We are all making a decision, a kind of priority in our life that we don't want to just live with our eyes closed and our ears closed and be unconscious and to follow the mass of society we are choosing or we have chosen that we are interested to become more conscious more conscious human beings 